Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Jochem. Okay gang, I know I said the last video was gonna be shorter if you're coming from the uh, Gabriel synthesis leveraging amino acid synthesis video. I promise you this one actually will be. So what's nice about the Strecker synthesis is that it is really straightforward and it involves a lot of chemistry that we've been, we have reused and uh, time and time again. So luckily this will be a short video. This will be, uh, you know, like light on the brain, it, it's just gonna be a good time, you know, we're gonna have fun, okay? So the Strecker synthesis. So let's just look at synthesizing. So again, it's gonna help us create uh, amino acids, right? We will make amino acids, and these amino acids, we will make them in a racemic mixture. So, you know, we won't get, we won't get all S or all are, we're gonna get equal amount of both, okay? So what is the Strecker synthesis? So let's just look at making alanine, okay? Right, remember we're gonna get equal parts R and equal parts S alanine, right? So here's how this will go. We already know what our target is, right? We already know we are aiming for something like this. Our R group here, I'm gonna draw no stereochemistry, right? Just gonna draw it flat. So we know it's just gonna be a methyl group. No surprises. So what's cool about the Strecker synthesis is that you use an aldehyde. So in this case, your aldehyde is always gonna be your C2 carbon. So this carbon is that carbon, okay? And I am gonna draw a long arrow, but I'm also going to mechanistically show what's happening down here, okay? So off of this carbon, which is C2, you're just gonna draw your R group. So all I need is acetaldehyde as my starting material, okay? So the Strecker synthesis happens with three steps, and they're, like I said, they're simple, you know them already. So step number one is that you do imine formation. So you're going to just throw in ammonia, and we need acid, right? So, and it's, I mean, we don't have to write catalytic, but it is. So remember, this is old stuff. This is, you know, throwbacks to your carbonyl days when, you know, things were light and breezy. Not that they are now, but it was, it was a different time, you know? So, right, I don't know if I need to, I don't have to, I'll link the imine formation video, but you know, we're gonna protonate, NH3 attacks, the whole bit. I'm gonna go ahead and draw some arrows. Fast forward, we go from our aldehyde to an imine. I don't have to draw. Here, I'm gonna just do some separation here. I don't have to draw the H there, and actually maybe I'll erase it, but again, it's just an imine formation. That's simple, nothing new there, okay? And you know what, I'm just gonna write, fast forward. Okay, so step one is imine formation. Step two, I'm realizing I actually needed some of this space, but we'll make do. Uh, step two, you're gonna throw some hydrocyan in the mix, okay? Hydrocyanic acid, sorry, I always get that wrong for no reason. Okay, hydrocyanic acid, HCN, the homie, an OG, right? And all that's going to happen here is just, you know, just like step one, we're gonna protonate this nitrogen and then CN minus cyanide is going to attack. So what's going to happen is we have HCN, we're going to protonate the nitrogen. Once the nitrogen is nice and protonated, just like a protonated carbonyl oxygen, right? That makes our carbon right here more susceptible to nucleophilic attack, more electrophilic, right? Then we bring in the CN minus. Oh, sorry, too many, too many electrons. And I'm gonna bring this over here. So what you end up in step two right, is you have an NH2, but then you have a, a CN, okay? And then last but not least, and I wish I didn't draw this line so close. Okay, cool. The third step is you do you hydrate your, uh, your nitrile to a carboxylic acid, because you can see we have, here's our C2, here's our amine, there's the amino group, there's our R group, we need to just turn the nitrile into a carboxylic acid and then we can call it a day. So step three is just pump 
pump some acid in there. There you go. Right? And again, that mechanism, I'll link the video, it's on Joechem, but you just pump some acid and water in there, and we can just assume then that we're going to exist like a Zwitter ion, but you can see that this is alanine, right? And if I wanted to be cool, what I could do is you could draw each product with wedge and dash, or if you want to show that this is racemic, you can do a little squiggle right there to show this is equal parts wedge and dash, okay? Cool. This is the Strecker synthesis. It, it's, it's, you know, if you wanted to almost write it out in steps, it's with an aldehyde, dot, 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 do imine formation, add hydrocyanic acid, to do a, you know, you do your imine formation, then you protonate that nitrogen, you attack with cyanide, right, that sticks it on, that gives you your amine, then all you need to do is just take your nitrile and hydrolyze it to a carboxylic acid, so then you can just do nitrile to, or nitrile hydration, sorry, Nitrile hydration. Okay, cool. So it's super, super simple. Let's just do one more. Let's make glycine and we'll call it a day. Okay, gang, let's make glycine and call it quits. All right, so in this Strecker synthesis, remember, we're making glycine. So I feel like a great place to start is let's ask ourselves, what is our R group? And glycine is perfect for this because remember, glycine, the R group is just a hydrogen, right? So, you know, what's nice is Remember, glycine is the amino acid that is at C2. There's no stereochemistry because we always have a hydrogen, but our R group for glycine is a hydrogen. So what's super nice is that we don't have to worry about, you know, being like, oh, it's a racemic mixture. Dang, you know, we only got half of, you know, if we were going for one enantiomer, but you know, we just, that's all we need. So remember this C2 right here, is going to be the carbon in your aldehyde, right? We're gonna just work with an aldehyde here. So the nice part is, to figure out what we need to work with, we just need from aldehyde, right? Because we know that the carbon in our aldehyde is the carbon that becomes C2. So we're good to go, right? And then all we need to do is fill in the reagents. Remember, the first step is imine formation. So we need ammonia and we need some acid, right? We know it's gonna be catalytic. Then, right, so step one would give us this. Which looks so funny, but I'll draw in the hydrogens. Okay, that's step one. Then remember, step two, we throw in our hydrocyanic acid, and I'm not gonna be, you know, a dingus and say it incorrectly this time. So remember, what that does is the nitrogen gets protonated by HCN, and then we, it's not quite done yet, Remember, we have a positive charge here. And then cyanide comes back, wants to join the party, attacks. So in step two, we end up with, remember, we have our amine, we have a nitrile, and our R group is right there. I'm not drawing the second hydrogen, right? But that's R group, right? I can, I can fill it in if we wanted to. And then remember, lovely step three is just hydration we're just going to toss water and acid in, and we're going to hydrate our nitrile, and that is what is going to give us the wonderful, you know, if we draw it like a Zwitter ion, that actually gives us our amino acid. So the Strecker synthesis, simple, elegant, beautiful. Okay, that's it, gang. There's a whole bunch you could do with these, right? Just honestly, just try them out. Try and make whatever you want to make, right? You just need to pick an out eye, you need to have the right stuff, and uh, there you go. So thank you for watching, thank you for hopefully liking and subscribing, and regardless, no matter what, I'll see y'all in the next video.